crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to decorate these mini pizza boxes by Stampin' Up! using your brother Scan and Cut. The project we'll be creating was by request to show you all the steps of this project. We are decorating mini pizza boxes like so. Okay, and I'll show you almost every step because I shared a couple steps just in yesterday's video. And I'll, I'll point out which steps that you need to go back and watch that video for. All right, so let's just get started right away with I'm um, getting my mat and we're gonna start doing some, you know, some of the cutting and then while it's cutting, I can show you the other papers. So what I'm gonna do is turn on my machine and you're going to see pattern and scan. I'm gonna use pattern because I wanna get the pizza boxes, the, the parts cut. Okay, so let's go into the shapes, the first one, and let's start with the square. The first square we need is going to be it's it's already in proportion so we're gonna say 3.45 inches wide okay if you're using a paper trimmer just remember don't make it quite four and a half I mean three and a half because it will be a little too big this is more accurate 3.45 inches now that's the piece we're cutting right now for the top of the pizza box okay now let's just say set now we need two more squares. We need one for the inside lid and one for the bottom. So let's select the square again and I'm going to select it and this time I'm going to say 3.4. This These need to be slightly smaller squares because to fit inside, I'm going to open that up to show you, to fit inside it needs to be slightly smaller and then we're going to make one to fit down in the bottom here. Okay, so there's 3.4 and we're going to make two of those. Voila, that fits on there. We could do a couple sets of pizza boxes at the same time, but I'm just doing one to show you. Now let's add the sides of the box. We need to add these panels. We're gonna go to pattern. We're gonna go to square, but this time, instead of making a square, we're gonna turn it into a rectangle. The way you do that is by unchecking this box here. This box here make, makes the square, the width, I mean the height and the width of the square stay in proportion, but if you check that, the height will not be in proportion to the width. And the height can be one inch like it needs to be for this little pizza box. So one inch, up, oh, I went too far. There we go, down. Okay, one by 3.45. That's the same as before. And we need, we actually only need four of those, but what I'll do, what I do, okay, if you look at, if you look at my sheet that I've already cut out, is I just go ahead and cut out six, why? because they fit three, let me make that a little straighter. They fit, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, no sense wasting paper. You'll see what I mean when I go put six of these on the mat. And then you have two extras that you can use. See, they just fit in there perfectly. And then you can even group those and move those up a little because there's a big gap there, but that's fine. We don't need to. We have plenty of room. I have my paper. I'm gonna put a piece of paper on the mat and I'm just gonna go ahead and load the mat and I'm going to say cut. Okay, so we're gonna say okay, and select, and we wanna cut. So we wanna cut these. And I'm gonna go ahead and say start. So see what it's doing. You can see that it's cutting. I'll show you the other paper, papers in this stack. So this is something that's on clearance right now. Here are some little pieces I've already cut out. Okay, now it's called dashing along, and the coordinating colors are garden green. It's saying that the uh, paper got stuck a little. I had to, I had to move the lever to two. No, no big deal. That's because my paper wasn't on very tight. Okay, so garden green. That's one of the coordinating colors. You get four sheets of this, double sided, and you have cherry cobbler. And I love the back of this one. Okay, so you get four sheets of this one, double sided. This is retired paper, by the way. It's last season's paper. I started using it yesterday while I was anxiously awaiting my new catalog from the new items from the new holiday catalog. Okay, and then there's the other side of this cherry cobbler and garden green together. Very beautiful. So you get 12 sheets. Mine got a little bent in the shipping, but that's okay because I used my scan and cut to cut them out. Okay, so let's see. Okay, it did a good job. Pretty good. It got, it did get stuck in the, it did get stuck in the scanner a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing, I just wanna show you this. 
then you'll get a better idea. So I have six little wrappers, so now I have double-sided. So if we do this to all your sheets, we'll do it to at least one more. You'll have more variety for decorating your boxes. Okay, now what you do is you line up, like if you wanna, we're gonna put these on the box, but if you wanna see, if you wanna make sure you know which one was the lid. See how the lid is just a smidgen bigger. That was the one for the outside lid, but then this is for the inside of the lid. Okay, let's put these aside. We're gonna cut one more. That way you get to see the mat being loaded. I don't want you to miss any steps. And you get to see how I utilize almost all of my paper when I'm doing projects like this. So I, I suggest mass produce, cut all your pizza boxes, then, then do all your decorating. I like this one better. I like this one with the, the green background better. So I'm gonna use that one. By the way, if your paper, if your mat's not very sticky and it starts sticking up, that's why I had to move the lever to two. It made me move the lever to two. All right, so all your, you didn't miss anything. It just said, it said, finish cutting. It said, okay, we say okay, and then it cut. Now we're just gonna cut one more set of these. And like I said, there's a little gap there. So really, if you wanted to, and let's just show you that now. I always like to give you extra little things in your tutorials here. See how these ones have a little gap between the ones above? So if I select those with the selection tool, and I can select, make a little, oops, I didn't mean to select. I just meant to select around that section, not the whole section. So use the selection on the left. Okay, let's unselect. Let's try that again. I had them all selected. We wanna just select partial. Yeah, see how I just selected just those? So now, those six can be moved up a bit. So let's first of all just go to Object Edit and group them, the circle and the triangle. Now, now that I've grouped them, I'm gonna say okay. I can nudge them. I'm using the arrows, nudge, nudge, nudge. A few pixels. If you do that, maybe, I don't know how many I've done, probably 10 pixels by the time I'm done. You will make, you will ensure that you can fit two whole sets of pizza boxes here. Then you can then you can duplicate, copy and paste that and duplicate these, and you'll be able to make two whole pizza box projects out of one sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper. I, I didn't embark upon making so many, so I ended up making more later, but I would have done that in the first place. Back to cutting. Okay, I just hope you understood that, and I, I get way more into that in other, other tutorials. This one's really about the project itself. I really want, want you to see all the steps of the project involved in this pizza box. From the cutting out the pieces, to assembling the box, to cutting out the truck. And I'm not going to show you how to color it again because I showed that yesterday. But I do want to show you how to assemble the truck and make it wobble on the, on the pizza box. That way you can try this with any stamps that you may already have. Okay, if you'd like to get a hold of this set, it's available now. This is in our annual catalog. This super cute ride with me truck set that I'm referring to. And by viewer re request, I'm going to just stamp that little tree back onto the truck again and cut one of those out. Because yesterday there could have been a problem with my focus, but it could be the way YouTube shows videos to different people on different devices. Let's say okay, and I'm going to unload this mat. Okay, now, when you unload the mat, you peel off the cardstock that you are not using, and then you have all the little pieces left. And you bend the mat a little bit if you want, but the mat's not very sticky, they'll just pop right off. The one that we made in the top left was our little, was the one that was a little bit bigger than the others. So, let me just kind of peel those off and see. So if you put the one behind, then you'll know. So I always make a bunch of these and I put my the ones that are gonna go on the outside of the box in one spot, and the ones that go on the inside of the box in another pile, and then I keep them all separate for my little assembly line. Okay, so we have all the pieces we need for a couple projects. Let's at least do the stamping, and that way we can let this dry. So I'm gonna stamp one truck. I'm gonna take a piece of Whisper White cardstock, that's Whisper White, and I'm gonna take a piece of uh, this is my foam, like my foam pad for stamping. It's always good to put like a little cushion under your stamp when you're stamping. Okay, we're gonna stamp one truck. That's it. We did we did a couple trucks yesterday. And we hope we don't make any mistakes. I'm gonna use stamping block E for the truck. Whenever you get a big stamping block, you're safe because all of 
most of the stamps or all the stamps in this set will fit on that stamping block. These are called photopolymer stamps. You're going to slap that on there. I put some memento black ink on it. I just tap that onto the ink, tap the ink on there. I have a couple ink pads. You only need one. I just have one that's not kind of dried out. Okay, then I'm going to stamp the truck. Okay, I'm going to push down. I'm going to hold for about three seconds. Now, the way the artist created this truck is they put a couple little gaps in it to make it kind of whimsical and fun, which is great, except that the scanner won't recognize this truck unless you enclose those lines. It might not be something that you can see, but trust me, if you don't enclose them, it will not recognize them. So you get a number two pencil and you enclose those little gaps like that. Okay, you can erase them later to keep that whimsical look and keep the artist intent true. Keep true, to, keep true to the artist intent. And you don't have to worry about the ones inside because we only want to get an outline around the whole truck. And there's a little gap in this tire. Sometimes it, it matters, sometimes it doesn't. So there, I'm now I filled in the gap. Now I want to show you the tree again because by request, I was asked to show how I did that tree. Okay, so you take, whenever you want to just take a different color, and put it on something, you use a marker. It's a good idea to use a marker because the tree has all these little motion wispies and I didn't want the little motion wispies. I just wanted, I just want the, the tree itself. So it goes like that, let's see. It goes like that, see, on the truck. See, just like the picture. Okay, so it's gonna go like that. So I just lay it on the truck and I, okay, that, that'll work. And then I'm gonna take my little stamping block I can take a smaller stamping block now and that is stamping block C and I can just push it on there okay I didn't show that part yesterday I just did it without you even seeing it but I'm going to show that part that's just how I mount it onto the stamp block or you could just slap it on with your hand you could just peel it off it's like a sticker just slap it on there it doesn't matter now what I want to show you is something I showed you yesterday if you take a marker you can color the parts you want I'm using garden green because that's a coordinating color. Okay, I'm gonna do it farther further away this time so you get a better view of that. So I'm just, all I'm doing is coloring the tree but not the little wispies, not the little pine needles. I'm using garden green. Now, if you've been coloring for a while, I'm just gonna focus that. And you know, you're just like tired and you're coloring and you have a big image, then it's good like, okay, and then you look at it and you're like, oh, I didn't really get it off. Well, then some parts have already dried. By the time you do this or you're watching TV, some parts have already dried. And so you need to do what's called huffing. You huff onto your tree. And that just means breathing onto your stamp, okay? And that'll wet the stamp again. And then when you stamp it, it'll look better. It'll be like wetter. Okay, so I'm just gonna get over the truck and stamp that. And I want this to sort of connect to the truck which it did, and that way I can cut it all out in one piece. Okay, and then later I showed how to color those, but right now we'll just do the review of the stamping and then we'll decorate our whole project. Okay, we're, I think it's, it's probably dry enough. Now normally I would let that dry, but I think it's dry enough because I was doing the tree and talking. Okay, so I'm gonna rub this onto, rub the mat. Okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna load the mat. You know what that looks like. I'm gonna bring the machine closer. And we are going to just review from yesterday how to cut out stamped images. I'm just gonna go a little faster than I did yesterday because I know a lot of you have already seen that part. So now we're just gonna go back to the home screen. We got our pizza box parts. Now we're just gonna cut out the truck. We're gonna say scan. We're gonna say direct cut because we're directly cutting out the truck. We are going to save the image onto our machine this is just a temporary storage spot and 12 by 6 area. That means I'm only scanning in the top of this mat. That's all I need to scan in. And we say start. It says the scanner lever is set to position 2. Is that it right? I'm just going to set it back to 1. It only needs to be set to 1 and it was asking me. I did set it back to 1. That's the, that's the lever on the left side of the machine. Whenever you have thick paper, you should set it to lever 2. And it thought my paper was thick because the mat's not very sticky and my paper's coming up a bit. And so it sometimes thinks I need to be on lever two, but I really don't. Let's say okay so you can see what happened here. This 
did a fantastic job. I'm going to tilt my camera and zoom in for you so you can really see what a fantastic job it did selecting that truck. We're going to say okay. We're going to put an outline distance around the truck of 0 0.04. We're going to say okay. And I, don't, I could also ignore objects if there were other objects around there. But the nice thing about using a big old piece of Whisper White cardstock, I'm going to go ahead and say cut. See, select cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut. The nice thing about using a big piece of Whisper White cardstock is it just saves you from having all those extra specks that got selected all around the outsides. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out now. Get a good idea of what's going on. And now what I'm doing is getting the truck. Then I can clear my table and we're ready to decorate these pizza boxes. And see what I put inside, and there's just lots and lots of options. These are great for craft fairs. These pro this project is great for craft fairs. I'm gonna go ahead and unload the mat, and there is my stamped image. Okay. And it's stamped as one. Now there are dies that come with this. There are dies that coordinate with this, but they do not stamp the little truck like this. And furthermore, the little the little tree would have come out as a separate object and we just like to do things efficiently so because we have a brother scan and cut so that's why and I'm just gonna make my projects the way I see fit but I also have the dies which I showed yesterday so here we have a bunch of pieces let's get going we have you need some rolling adhesive to attach your pieces to the pizza box now one thing about the pizza box this is my own personal preference and I know I get, I'll get comments like, why don't you just assemble them while they're flat? Well, I've tried that before. I, that's not my preference. I just don't assemble them while they're flat. No reason. I just, I just don't. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to assemble them. I, I just take the pizza boxes and I fold along all the score lines. These are very really high quality. These are in our annual catalog, available now. Okay, you just fold along all the score lines. And I use the glossy side for the inside because... I guess it's like food safe, that's why they made the glossy side inside. You could just put a cookie straight in there. It'll hold a nice big cookie. But I always tend to put wrapped candies in it or doggy biscuits or something. Okay, now for this little part, when you fold that, hold that little, hold that down so it doesn't get, see, because you only bend that part. Okay, so just like a pizza box, super easy to assemble. Okay, now I assemble them and then, see, hear that little clicking sound? I assemble them and then I put the then I put the pieces on it. That's just what I do. You could, if you want, put the pieces on while it's flat. There's no right or wrong way. So now I'm gonna figure out which one was the big one and which one was the small one. I can't remember, so one of them has to be bigger than the others. So I just kind of put them, I just try them out. I put them in front of each other. And there, I see that that one's a little bigger. Because remember I cut out three, but by the time you put them all in a pile, you might not know which one's which. Okay, so that's going to be the top, the one that's slightly bigger. The 3.45 inch square is the one that's bigger. I'm putting rolling, adhe rolling adhesive. We sell snail, but I use, I prefer this type. And it's a big old industrial size one. I put like one, two, three, four lines of rolling adhesive around the outsides. And I put one little piece in the middle. And then I just put it right on the top of the box. And what's nice is it's so easy for me to center. And maybe because I like to work in 3D, I just like that a little better than laying it down while it's flat. Okay, that fits perfectly on the pizza box. Now I'm ready to do the inside. So let's take a contrasting color and we make sure that we have a smaller one, which we do. This one's smaller than the other. So we'll put that, we'll put this side in. Maybe we'll put the ones with the stripes. I like the stripes. But see how that fits in there perfectly? You hardly need any adhesive because this fits so snugly in the lid of the box because we made it 3.4 inches in a square. So just a couple of little lines of adhesive is fine. You don't need too much in the inside. The outside gets more wear and tear. And again, it's just so easy to put inside. It just kind of snaps right in there. Okay, perfect. And now we're going to put one in the inside. Well, you're going to cover that up with some treats. So we could just, you know, use one of the newsprints. That looks cute, right? Vintage Christmas. Then I make the newsprint face up. I'll show you how to assemble one more box. Stick that in there. Okay, and for a treat idea, I went to Family Dollar 
And I found this gum that just matched perfectly. And I found a bucket of mints. And I found this too. I found, I found cool. This was only one of these. It was in with the other chapsticks. I said, oh, that's cool. So I was thinking something like this. You put the little Tic Tac gum. Oh, you should smell my room right now. That nice peppermint Come, smell coming out. Okay, so gum. Maybe a little bit of chapstick. And a couple of little mints. And now you got a good little Christmas cheer box of Christmas cheer going on. You can also decorate something on the inside right like that. And you shut your box. And you can just do these all day long. Everybody loves them. You put a little ribbon on them. Easy peasy. Okay, now we're going to do the outside. Okay, you just need, you need to take four colors. You just pick, they're all the same. So maybe here, these are good. And I just take like, you could put four different ones around the outside. I put two stripes of rolling adhesive on it, but I make sure that the rolling adhesive is up in the, the top so that it stays on good. We'll use that one for the back. Okay, so you just put that on the back of the box. And we'll put one on the front. So what I do is I put the same one on the back as I do on the front. That's just my own personal preference. And if you stuff your box a lot, that's when you use a ribbon to shut it. Okay, and for this one, for this little panel on the front, I, d I take my hand in here and I get rid of the extra adhesive. Because some adhesive got, when I put the two stripes of adhesive, a little bit got inside. So I just kind of curl that glue up. Okay, put that back down. It's like stay down, mints. They make it, everything kind of pop up, don't they? Okay, let's see. We have a couple other. So we already have too much green. We don't want to use the green on the side. That's too much green. The newsprint's kind of light. So let's say we would use this one for the side. So then we got a good contrast there. So we get that's the cherry cobbler color. Okay, two, two rows of adhesive. Okay, and then to get it straight, it, it does dry quickly, but if you can, you can move it a little bit if you move it right away. Then you get some matching twine or just some, just any twine or any kind of like linen thread, something small to tie it with. That would be cute to keep it really snug. Or you could put a little bit of adhesive on it. So now we have that. Now let's show you some. So we had, we've been doing our scan and cutting. So I, yesterday I showed you how to color. So I just want to point out a couple things is that, all right, so I colored with coordinating colors. So the coordinating colors are cherry cobbler, stamp and blends, light and dark. Okay, so I used the dark for this little bumpers, dark cherry cobbler. I used the light for the inside of the truck. Okay, so I used the light cherry cobbler. Then I used the shaded spruce, light shaded spruce, because that's what I have for the inside of that tree. And then I went over it again with the darker marker. I mean, with the, with the, I went over those lines again with the Stampin' marker that I showed you earlier, this one. Okay, and I used the fine side. Okay, so, so far that's what I used. Then I used for the tires, Smoky Slate Dark, and I used Smoky Slate Light for the tires. Finally, for the window, I used Smoky Slate Light, but I wanted the window to be lighter than the rest of the truck. So can you see that? I hope so. The, to make the window lighter, I used the color lifter, and it got rid of some of the, the gray color. It lifts up some color of the alcohol markers. Then finally, I put Wink Estella on the whole truck, and I'm going to show you that. I did that part. I've already done this one. Wink Estella, this one I've already colored. This one here is one I've already colored, but I didn't put Wink Estella on it yet. And I didn't use my dark shade spruce at all. So I take my Wink Estella, and it is a little glitter brush available now in our annual catalog. Anyone who orders anything from my annual catalog will automatically get the holiday catalog this month. And I put some in the window too, the little Wink Estella sparkles. You could just sparkle the whole truck, it would be really cute. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done our project. So then you got some sparkly going on. Let that dry. And then you need a wobble spring. And a wobble spring is something that you glue onto the, to the truck. Oh, I don't know what happened to my wobble springs. Here they are. I get these by the hundred. <laughs> There'll be a link in the description. So I take the, it, it doesn't really matter. There's never really a right or wrong way, but I do sometimes because this is such a heavy truck, I'm going to use the harder plastic. There's a hard plastic and a light plastic. I'm going to use the harder plastic under the truck. 
Okay, so I'm going to peel off those sticker. They're double sticky. And I'm going to stick the sticker onto the back of the truck. And that's the blends do bleed through because I used regular Whisper White cardstock. I didn't use the thick Whisper White cardstock. I used the regular. And the alcohol markers blend bleed through. No big deal. Then you're going to peel off the sticker side on this side and put it onto your pizza box. And then we'll make the little sentiment. So here's the pizza box. We already have stuff in this one. I gave you some ideas, and there's lots of stuff you could put in these pizza boxes. Maybe I'll do a craft fair video where I could show you all the different things I put in these pizza boxes. Coffees, candies. Oh, I can't stop wobbling it. Even though I'm supposed to be recording right now, I can't stop playing with the little wobbly truck. Okay, so now we're going to take, we're going to say, wishing you Christmas cheer. We take that out of this stamp. The acrylic stamp set, we take that out. Take it out of the stamp case. We're going to use Memento Black. I'll just go ahead and use that black, big block again because that's what I have. So just stick that on there, slap it on. And you take your scrap of paper, any scrap. Here's a scrap. I'm not a scrap, just a piece of Whisper White. Put down your sponge. You're like, you are a messy crafter, paper chef. So we have to find our sponge. Here's our sponge. Put that down. And we're gonna just put our little sentiment on there. So, tap, tap, tap. I'll just use the one ink this time. Hopefully it's enough. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put, wishing you loads of Christmas cheer. And it came out good the first time. So there we go. Then we're gonna take our punch. And the punch I'm using, again, everything I'm showing you is available now. You don't have to wait for the holiday catalog. Here's the holiday catalog. I have it taped shut because I'm not allowed to show you it until September 4th online, so it's taped shut. I can look inside, demonstrators can look inside, we're allowed to pre-order. And even if you get a starter kit for $99, you can pick out $155 worth of stuff in your pre-order, and you get a coupon. Demonstrators can do that. Anyway, I will have links to my store in the description. So I'm using Timeless Label Punch. And then for that, and I just kind of noticed that some letters are darker than others. That's the way the stamp was made. I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. We're going to put a little bit of rolling adhesive back there. Or you could put foam adhesives. It really doesn't matter. It's because you just want to contrast that with... I'm just going to put a couple rows of rolling adhesive. It's contrasted with your truck, which is sticking up and wobbling. We'll play with it one more time. We'll wobble our truck. And if it's a little crooked, you can, you can make it... There we go. So that's it. So we, we have we have made, I made these yesterday. You can decorate some more. You can put another sentiment up in the, in the middle of the inside. You can put Tic Tacs, gum, candy, coffee, any kinds of treats. You could then put a little ribbon around these. So please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And yay, I made it under a half an hour. <laughs> this is the Paper Chef. Bye for now.